What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Level With You show, a weekly video game podcast where we get together and talk about, you guessed it, video games. Today, I am joined to my left by Kenny Castro. Hey. To my right, Anthony Dewart. Pay off your credit cards. That's my head. And Tyler Hadley behind the booth. I play with basketballs. All right. I didn't know where that was going. I'm glad where it went. Okay. That was barreling down so this is episode 11. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Uh, you can find us also on podcast services. We are on iTunes, Podcast Addict, and I believe Spotify. Double check me on that, but I believe we are there. Um, we also have a couple Let's Plays coming up, so stay tuned for those. But for now, we will begin the show with what we've been playing. Guys, let us know. Let the audience know. You know, the same weeb shit I play every week. I don't know. Uh, Titty Toucher 2. Uh, I don't know. Anime Girl in Your Bedroom 5. Uh, no. Um, I played more Persona 5 this okay. week, so I'm getting getting uh, getting along there. I'm like, what what I, dungeon are you on? I'm on... I just beat Okumura, so I just beat the, I want to say, fifth or sixth dungeon. Okay. It's the foods guy who looks like an alien and uses his robots to attack you. That was a pretty cool fight. And I got the new girl, Haru, in my party. Spoilers. Haru. Oh, uh, she's ooh, the worst. Haru. Yeah, she's her. I thought it was really funny. Her persona's name's Milady, so I just kept thinking Milady. I was like, "Where's the fedora?" I, know. I honestly, fedora. For, I, I have not, I have forgot about her. It's a game with lots of memorable characters, and she's got a big know. forehead. I don't know. She's just a little bland, and she, uh, she is a little. But anyway, they can't all be zingers. No, nah. because once you get so many, I see this like with a lot of animes that try to do that. They're like, "All right, we're going to introduce a bunch of cool characters, and they all got great personalities, and they have like one episode where they're kind of interesting, and they never get fleshed out after that. Just kind of mm. like show up in the background." Yeah, maybe in the R, we'll get a little bit more about Haru. Yeah, I don't know. Persona Haru. <laughs> so uh, you also told me you were playing a little fighting game based on uh, a little My Hero Academia. Yes, yeah, people might might know it. It's a pretty popular anime franchise right now, or a Boku no Hero Academia if you want to be annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty fun. It's just like a it's little you know it's just pandering to fans. If you're a fan of the anime, if you're a fan of the series, you'll like it. It's uh, what's the fighting inputs like? Is it? It's kind of like a free roam almost. It's uh, you ever played any of the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games? Mm-mm. The, uh, the way they did it was it's, you know, one screen, you have your character, you start off closest to the screen, your opponent starts off farther off into, like, the background, you can see him, but it's pretty much, it's all on one plane, but it's 3D, so instead of, like, a classic uh, one-plane 2D fighter, you kind of have this little arena or area to move around and fight in, and controls are right, you can jump, which is really neat, I love any game, that, you know, any fighting it's game like you a, jump like in. like a Xenoverse. Pretty much, yeah, it's like exactly like a Xenoverse. I don't know less if I've played a fighting game where you don't jump. It's true, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it feels a little more... Uh, a little more less chained down in the, like a 3D space rather than like you can do like the okay course, so it's a 3D up, um, fighter okay but it's I mean it's neat you have the combos are pretty simple from what I've seen so far it's nothing like too intricate very kind of casual and there's no big like evil fighting scene for it you've been telling me about this show I guess I should get into it it sounds like you guys like it it's a lot awesome. yeah. I'm, I'm personally a big fan everyone likes it everyone likes it I yeah. even have my 7 year old son watching it he loves wow. it wow okay so yeah you're saying that the uh, text yesterday or the other day you're like oh I'm watching it with my kid yeah he was freaking out in the one scene with um, Muscular. Oh, I love that scene. That was uh, so good. That one, that one almost brings tears to me every it single does. time. It doesn't matter how many times I watch that scene. I watch that before I go to the gym to get pumped up. I'm sitting in my little car, my fat gut hanging out like, wow. Dude, you watch the first episode right at the end when All Might's like, anyone can be a hero. Yeah. Even you. And I'm like, oh, he's talking to me. <laughs> so what is it? Like a inspirational? It's, 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 a, it's a, all around pretty great. I think they flesh out the even the minor characters pretty well yeah. slowly. You know, I think it's it's phenomenal the storytelling. So I definitely would say check it out. Okay. They have all three seasons dubbed so far on Hulu. On Hulu, yep. Mm-hmm. Good Hulu, to know. Crunchyroll, no Netflix yet, but yeah. Yeah, I got Hulu. They're it's doing that good. Saint Seiya on Netflix though. Oh my God! I don't want don't talk to me about that. Right <laughs> Save now. it for the anime cast, y'all. All right, what about you, Tyler? I'm gonna pick on you. You been okay. playing anything new? Uh, playing no, balls. nothing really new. I've been playing Apex a little bit. Um, still on that and grind. I haven't been playing a whole lot of games recently, um, but there's a game that has piqued my interest due to economics. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way yeah, to play so it. Let me know about this uh, beans, little boy. scheme you got cooking up. So, my roommate, X White Lightning X. <laughs> this is gamer tag. <laughs> All right, Sasuke, uh, come on. <laughs> and uh, so he has played Ark. Survival unleashed evolved evolved yeah. yeah in the past so he's t- he he just got back into it 
And he's telling me that when he was playing it months ago, I mean, he was like religiously playing it almost every day. And he made over like $1,500 on this game by selling dinosaurs, trading dinosaurs, selling camps, land, all sorts of things on the various servers. And I was like, wow, that's ridiculous. much ridiculous. Did, did he tell you how much he had to invest? Because I know it's free to play. He no, he he's just just time. Really, and that's why people are purchasing these things from other players because mm-hmm. they don't takes, want to spend the time. It takes X amount of time to raise one of the best dinosaurs or whatever, and people just want the best dinosaur to to get, ride around to, on. And well, there is like a story part of the game, and like once I get, according to him, once you get towards the end of the story, like the the bosses, um, you really need the, these like strongest dinosaurs. Huh. So, so is it like a like, Pokemon, like kind of like digital pet? Because you said like yeah, I was yeah, asking yeah. you before, and you said like the game you, still I, plays I when you're really not online. Know all the details that go into it, I guess you capture them and you uh, tame them, tame them, and you walk around with them. And there's like other uh, words that he told me about <laughs> 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 this and that. And breed them. And we were like chocobos. Yeah, so so think about it yeah. almost as a hybrid Minecraft meets um, Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi, you know, Pokemon is <laughs> like so. You you really have to. You start off once your character is you know in the game. You have nothing. You have like boxers on, and you have to craft everything. And you have to make sure you eat. You can go. You can die from like hypothermia. You could get too cold. Mm-hmm. So you have to make sure you make yourself clothes. Fire, make a fire so you could sleep around, or it could be around so you're not so you don't die from cold. It it's very. Very involved. In, involved, like so. The amount of time Tyler's gonna be putting into that—that's gonna be nice, <laughs> nice to see. It's gonna be the next. Well, I mean, twenties. He's, he's pitching it to me like I'm like one of three people that would be working on, in this camp, and it's so, a and scheme. so wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. I've heard a lot of Ponzi is, schemes. In my is time. this like urban life scheme. of Ark? Like, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> okay. And once you get up to this many dinosaurs, then you can sell the purple dinosaur. You, you know what it is? I think Tyler's trying to recruit us for his camp, so we could be working like around the guys, hour as well. Let me tell you. You. This, this is a great This is the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> Tyler's going to get so attached to his dinosaurs that he's not going to want to sell them. He's, like, he's going to be do. getting offers for like 1200 bucks. He's like, no, that's he my dinosaur. In like yeah, a month, right. Tyler's going gonna, Tyler's gonna to be like, guys, look, I'm being honest. Look at these checks I'm getting. They're, they're legit. Look at my PayPal account. You see these transactions? <laughs> There's three. What did you spend $300 on? Oh, that was that was personal stuff. That was, that was for the dinosaurs. So they, they got to eat. Yeah. All right, so we'll have to follow up next next week and the following week for Tyler's but the uh, game right now you can buy a, digit, a physical copy for $30 is the cheapest that I can find it oh I um, thought the game was free to play oh no, 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 oh, no, no it's, it is free on Xbox Game Pass that's what confused yeah. me yeah okay. and yeah, I, but, I have picked it up on the when it was in preview so I think I got it for $15 yeah original it's not really on sale right now yep. well, even it's a the, small investment for for fifteen hundred, giant return. That's what I try to tell myself every time I buy a booster box of Magic the Gathering cards. I was like, oh, I'd probably get a, I'll pull a card that's like fifty bucks. That's like half my cash back, and never end up selling the cards. I know. <laughs> Just like mm, look at all these booster. That packs. was like when I like first started playing Magic. Yeah, yep. I pulled like this super duper rare card. Yeah, you like, had the warm coil I, engine. I should sell it. Yeah, you could. No, I never, did, never did. First scratch off ticket I ever bought, I won fifty bucks. Since then, no more than like four. I never win any. And then the one time I gave scratch, uh, like the the lottery tickets to uh, like a coworker for Secret Santa, they won five hundred bucks. Ah, uh, that would wow. piss me off. I looked, at them, <laughs> I looked at them. They were like, "Kenny, thank you. I just won five hundred dollars." I'm like, "Are you fucking serious?" <laughs> <laughs> you mean you know you spent that with I, me, right? I, I legit feel like when I scratch them off, it says negative twenty bucks. Like, <laughs> like, are you gonna buy me dinner at least? <laughs> right. So, when are we kissing? All right, Kenny, how about you? Um, well, I had to do like an overnight this past weekend, so I actually ended up investing like eight hours almost into um, Super Mario Rabbits. Oh, oh yeah. okay. So I, I was like, oh, I have it, you know, let me just play it. I brought it with me. I really was flipping through all my Switch games, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I'll play this all night. And I ran my battery down from 100% to like 13% all night long. Nice. Right. So That's what, good battery life. Did you uh, start from the beginning? So yeah, I did start from the beginning. Um, I think I, ju- I by the time I let off, I had already gotten Luigi, and I did maybe like 
two, three more, three more missions after getting Luigi. Okay, so you're still on the first, first world, first okay. world. Yep. Okay, so I played that game. I think did you let me borrow it, Tyler? Yeah, I think yeah. So. so I played it. I think I got to level world three, mm. and I had just, uh, I thought it was really fun, but it got a little bit repetitive after a while. I don't know if I owned it, then I probably would have gone back to it by now. But I think I gave it back to Tyler and. You know, that was that, but... It's pretty cheap yeah. now. I think the I'm primed happened, Yeah, the same thing happened to me is where I just played it for a while and uh, just got tired of it <laughs> after playing it for so long. Yeah, mm. maybe if they threw in some more, like, they put Donkey know, Kong skins DLC. for Mario yeah, or they, something. They definitely did put some DLC in there, so I might pick oh, it true. up. Oh, true. And, that, yeah, that's paid DLC, mm. right? Yeah. Um, How many, like, worlds are there? Is it eight worlds, kind of like... Five, worlds? actually, five. but each world takes a, hours. Yeah, because yeah. it's all, like, XCOM maps, right? It's all strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And then, mm. you know, you sometimes are incentivized to replay levels to get better ratings and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Might get better weapons and all that. More money to buy weapons, yeah. Yeah, so... It's an interesting concept. Yeah, I think it worked out better than people were expecting, and I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up getting a sequel someday. I remember one of my E3 predictions was a uh, part two. Yeah, you know, it was a, well, no, it was actually no, no, it was a Rayman and Donkey Kong platformer. Rayman, Donkey Kong. Damn, that'd be cool. That would be so cool. Do it, Ubisoft and Nintendo. Yeah. Maybe we'll get Rayman in the next Rabbids because it's already Rabbids. So maybe yeah, we'll true. Do a Rayman kind of thing. Rayman mm. Legends still, in my opinion, the most underrated game of. The past many years, mm. a masterpiece of a platformer. Just so much content, so much diversity in the levels, so much charm and great controls. And check it out if you haven't. It's on everything. Yeah. So other than that, the only other thing I ended up playing for most of the week um, was some more 2K19. Just because I'm I'm keeping up with those online leagues that I'm in, and I just played um after basketball yesterday my playoff games that I've made it out the first round. Some nail biters. I think a couple of them came down to like the last five points. Wow! So, so if you lost, would you be done? Yeah, I would have been out of the out of out of the playoffs. Oh wow! And then would you have had to st start a whole new well, season? I would have had to wait for them to finish up. So then, if we were gonna do another season, we you know we do another season. But this way, other users online. So oh, okay. So you're all controlling a, s a single a, player. A single team. Oh, a, s a single team. So it's an online franchise. Okay. So um, you know, we drafted, we did our fantasy draft. So I have picked my players, and I'm the Miami Heat. So my star player is Kyrie, and I lost Kyrie. Kyrie, uh, Kyrie, yeah. Irving, on the Miami Heat. So it's a fantasy draft. So, oh, okay. So <laughs> it's, it's so it was like we had to go round by round picking players, whoever was available at your select at your pick. So I, you know, I kind of built my team around him. Gotcha. And got by out of my first round today after I leave the podcast. I have, I'm have i already being hounded about playing my my second round series because the guy's been waiting for me already. Oh, really? Yeah. Jeez, that's some high-pressure so, stuff. And, like, they, they got a group text going, which I kind of had a silence for, for a little bit because they were sending, like, 30 messages. Jeez. Uh, like, just trash talking. And I was like, you guys are killing my battery right now. Damn. Like, yep. So there's one kid. I'm kind of looking forward to playing them. I'm, I'm already looking past the second round. I'm pretty sure I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. This kid, the other kid, though, I know he's. I'm going to see him in the conference finals, and he beat me by 40. Oh, no. Yeah. So I was like, but then, you know, kind of kind of cheese. He was playing off-ball defense, with, so letting the computer guard me. So oh, okay. he was, just... like, playing away from me. So I was like, okay, I can see what you're doing. You're being cheesed. Smart. It's smart, yeah, because if he, because everybody that's plays like that's me, I would do. everybody that's trying to play me straight up, I'm cooking them with Kyrie. Like, I'm always getting to the rim. It's, I'm laying it up, or I'm getting fouled, and I'm going to the line, or I, or you overcommit to my drive, and I just step back for a three. So it's, it's like, it's the smartest way to play me is playing off ball, you know? I, think, I feel like when I play defense, I'm probably on ball. 60% of the time okay. like but it is I remember that it actually showed as like a stat when the game was starting percentage that this player plays on ball oh, yep which is interesting because you know when you're not playing on ball you have a lot better chance of stealing uh mm -hmm. interception steals anyway no yeah. or or like know, getting the passing lane or getting yeah, the block off or the rebounds yep so you know, I don't think that's cheating or anything. It's a, I, it's not. It's no. just a cheese way to play. I say. Right. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, <laughs> and you say that because you lost by forty. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I play every person 
straight up. Like I on ball <laughs> defense. Hit X every time. Man. Every time it switches, yeah. if he passes it, I'm switching onto that player and I'm playing up. I'm now, is the gameplay every... per player? Does that depend on that player's stats or is yes. it the player skill? Players, the play a little bit of both. Yeah, kinda. both. Yeah. Because so you, can't, so you couldn't like spend? Did you like? I, I think we've talked about it before. But oh, did well, you if, you spend create, money? if you create a player, yeah. But yeah, this, yeah. But these are like the players, players. Oh, already so, in like. So the you can't improve them or anything. So, but okay. and we have the injuries on. So sometimes I, I'm afraid. Like I, I, I'll drive with Kyrie and he'll fall to the floor, and I'm like, if he's injured, I'm done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like he goes too hard. He goes for thirty points a game. Wow, for me. like okay, people be like, yo, when did he score? How long 30? are the quarters you're playing? Six. Six, six, six yeah. minute quarters, which is usually ends up to about the amount of points you would see in a real game. Exactly. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. if you played twelve, it'd be like yeah, it's it's so, astronomical. So yeah. yeah, astronomical. If I like, I did the. You know, there's a feature that after the game you could press triangle when you're looking at stats and it shows the per thirty six minutes if they played thirty. Those players played thirty six minutes. Right now, if Kyrie played thirty six minutes, he would be averaging a hundred points per game, which I thought was insane. I'm like, really? Like, he would not score that much, but whatever, it's okay. okay. Whatever you yeah, want to say. Yeah, that sounds weird. It's, it, like they're predi- they're, the way they predict that is kind of weird. Hmm. All right. So, anything yep. else you want to say? I don't know. No. About I, games you've been playing? That's the only ones I've been playing. I don't know if the guys want to say anything else about what they've been playing. I mean, I could go. Oh, do you, I think there was again one game you didn't mention. Uh, well, Dragon Quest. Yeah, well, yeah, you haven't gone. Yeah, my bad. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I didn't realize why they didn't go. I, I'm so used to it. I think last he's, week I went he's last. He's trying to burn me. Is what he's to <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap my head around the concept. Of I was trying sports. to get you to talk about MK right oh. away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll get there, man. Don't worry. Somebody went in and edited the outline. Yeah. Yep. Um. <laughs> so. Uh, I've been playing Dragon Quest XI. It's good the, game, yeah. Yeah, mm, it's good. good game. It's like a great game. How, how far are you so far? Uh, I am five hours and 16 minutes in because I just remember remembering that when I saved <laughs> at the little uh, That's church cool. last night. Mm-hmm. So I got to the point of the story where, you know, minor spoilers for Dragon Quest XI, uh, you kind of go back and visit your town where you grew up in and you're, you're having a vision and you see somebody from your past and then the storm right you find out that the village has been destroyed oh. and now you're set off into the world to figure out what the hell you're supposed to do and learn your destiny and yada yada it's kind of opening up um yeah and not that i was still on the tutorial now. yeah I, I have a i have a feeling it will will because right now it's been a little monotonous mm-hmm. i've still been liking my time with it for the most part although Part of me is like, eh, I should really be playing MK right now. <laughs> but <laughs> I uh, am having fun with the just how traditional it is. And it's, you know, I didn't play a ton of JRPGs, but just, you know, finding seeds of strength and mm-hmm. equipping bandanas to get up my defense by two. And it really hits that spot. Yeah. It's like good JRPG. It's like, it's like getting home cooking. It's like going to 99 restaurant and getting good old country fried chicken. It just hits that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's. Where was I, where was I going? Uh, shit, just a, brain just fart. A, just a, just a feel <laughs> to it, like just the, the collecting right. and customization oh. and yeah, everything. true. And like the music uh, is also very old fashioned, and it feels mm-hmm. kind of got that PS one type of yeah. sound to it. That actually a got bit. a lot of complaints when it first came out. A lot of people were like, oh, the stupid MIDI soundtracks, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's mostly known for, like, orchestral. Like, they, they record, like, orchestrated soundtracks, and they go all out. But this one, I guess they kind of did it, like, more so low-key. They did, like, a bunch of MIDI stuff, which, I yeah. mean, when I was playing through, I really couldn't tell. Like, I liked the whole soundtrack. I thought there was one tune. It's kind of like the main... I think it's, like, the overworld theme. It was mm-hmm. playing a little too much, and it was, like... I went into this area that was all rainy and stormy, and it was the same music. I was like, there should be scary music playing right now or something. Like, it's the same music that was just when it was all sunny and rainy outside when I was on the way to the woodcutter or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, going through the woods there. And, uh, but then a bunch of story stuff happened, and now I'm into it. Um, Before I was, I was, you know, I've been playing it for a week now, and I'm still only five hours in, so I haven't been giving it a ton of time, but I continue to I mean I, I plan to continue with it so keep you posted guys nice. uh, in addition to that I had a great time this week um, playing Super Mario Maker with a friend uh, we both took turns uh, making our own levels while the the other was gonna do another stuff and we both got a ton of fun out of it um, just seeing each other die at certain spots that 
you know, we, we tried to make super challenging or just figuring out the different mechanics. And we were actually playing on a controller on the TV, which uh, I kind of wanted to try first before doing the touchscreen because I hear that the touchscreen is so much more intuitive. And I felt like if I had done it first on the TV that I would get used to it. And I didn't really have that much problems. I mean, like I could see why you could do things faster. It's kind of like the equivalent of having a keyboard and mouse once you have a stylus on the screen. It's just a little bit more well-equipped, but I think they make really smart decisions as far as navigating the different menus and just all the things you have access to as far as, you know, adding items, changing the music in this location, um, changing the uh, enemy placements. There, there's so much stuff and it's all right there. Um, I've had I've been looking at other creators' levels. It's been, been super, super great. Like some of them are kind of tricky. Um, like one from the Celeste creator, I had to like kill these six piranha plants within a hundred second time frame, and there was very puzzly how they were set up all around the room, and I couldn't figure it out. But then I played another one uh, that was just like a really great rainbow themed level in the clouds. I mean, it felt like straight out of one of the best Mario games, and that was you know a home homebrew level. And yeah, it's just like I've I said this before, but this is a game I'll go back to for months, if not years, because it's, there's just so much fun stuff. And once you get later in the game, the story mode, there's I think there's 100 levels. Now I'm like, I've done like 65-ish of them, and they get to be much better as well once they, they the ramp they ramp the challenge up. It's, it's cool to be playing a Super Mario, Bro, or Super Mario Bros. level, then a new Super Mario Bros. Wii level, then a three level. So they switch it up like it doesn't stay just one consistent style. It's like, oh, no. you're trying. That's good. Yeah, it's, and that's, it's great to be playing new Nintendo levels that look like Super Mario World. It's mm -hmm. just cool novelty. Um, so can't say enough good things about that. Um, Let's crack out the Amiibos. Does, does it still have Amiibo support? You can get like, I don't, wacky stuff? I don't know if it does. I mm. think I've heard some people saying they're disappointed that it doesn't, but I can't confirm mm. that, so don't don't take my word as gospel. I mean, I guess it makes sense just because, I mean, I don't know for a fact either, but when the first Mario Maker launched, like, Amiibos were still, like, super, I mean, they're still up there, but they're, like, they were super hot. Like, everyone was like, well, Amiibos, and yeah. you get all the costumes, and they put all the stuff in it. Like, I mean, don't they still, like, practically sell out every time a new one comes pretty, out? Pretty much. <laughs> like, they're... They've got some stay in power. I still mm -hmm. just have my still one little Samus. Mm -hmm. What about you? Do you ever get any Amiibos, Kenny? Yeah, I have um, Ken. Oh, no. I have Ryu from Street Fighter. Oh, I've and, seen Ryu around. And I think I have Lucas, and I have two um, Animal Crossing ones. Nice. Oh, okay. I have four. Gotcha. Yeah. Anthony's like, I have 135. Uh, and counting. <laughs> Those are going to be hard to move. Those, I'm just worried because I hate, like... It's a very toy collector thing, but like when you like have two little things of plastic in the same box together and they rub up and they like rub off their paint on one another, Oof. it just like irks me. That sounds I hate it. Irkful. Gotta get like so I want to keep them in the box, but and you can't play with toys you have in the box. All right, yeah. now it's time for the MK11 minute. <laughs> and go. So uh, I've been doing some more towers, trying to get platinum, uh, doing some more character towers to unlock the character intros and stuff. Okay. Um, I went back to Liu Kang. Now that I've got some more experience under my belt, I'm a lot better with um, just utilizing his not quite full move set, but getting to utilizing the full move set, uh, stringing together a few really good combos, um, starting to you know use stuff like his dragon stance and stuff like that, which I didn't really use before. Um, doing uh, I, uh, last night there's a really cool uh, fucking what's her name. Scarlet mask or a, a, a scarlet faceless mask, which is cool. So yeah. now I got the Sub Zero one, I got the Scarlet one, I got the Jade one. So okay. I don't know. it's like my comfort game right now. You're, you're going at it, man. I see. Yeah, you. I mean, I've been. Uh, so so when are when are you gonna challenge me again? Uh, soon, soon. I'll challenge you soon. I think I'll be streaming it. I think I'll, <laughs> I think that day I'll decide I'll get on the level with you with Twitch stream. We should yeah. do that. It'd be fun to see you guys go at it. And I'll be exposing Wiley uh, on live. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see about that. Tyler and I will do some uh, Fighter Z. Get back in the swing of it. There you go. It's um, been a while. It's also, been a while. we will have a Mario Maker uh, video coming up in the next few days, so keep an eye out for that, uh, where these guys are going to try to attempt my first level ever, ever. So don't be too critical of it. It's 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 I. Right. It's okay. Get the feedback. It's okay. Yeah, Comments, yeah. how you grow. Mm -hmm. All You're right. Good. So I think that's what's been playing. 
what we've been playing, that is. <laughs> See what I did there? Tyler, what time is it for now? I think it's harder, harder to understand every week. <laughs> that was cru- it's, it's, it's a goal. This is what we're going for. I was cruising for a newsin. Uh, so it's the summertime, as we've been saying the past three or four weeks. It's been getting a little hard to come up with stories. But uh, with Anthony's help, we were able to come up with a few for this week. Uh, come, some of them are a little old. We had like a couple break right after the show last week or the following day. Uh, some MK movie stuff, some Switch light stuff, which we're going to touch on briefly. Um, or lightly, you could say. Or lightly. <laughs> <laughs> you're, too, you're too much. Anthony, you added this one. Why don't you take the lead on it? I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, this, which one? Uh, wait, wait, a, no, uh, uh, I added that one. Oh, you Excuse added that me. one, Tyler? <laughs> no, oh, okay. I was going to say, I was like, what the hell is this? I was like, I did not do that one. All right, Tyler. He felt offended. All right. about JGL? I guess I can jump into this. There's a big exploitation debate, and here are the details. Ubisoft partners with Joseph Gordon-Levitt's Hit Record Studio, which if you're not familiar with Hit Record, um, Hit Record is a community-based uh, freelance, not really freelance, but people do like projects together. It's all a lot about collaboration, uh, music producers, editors, uh, uh, video shooters, like things like that. Um, so somebody can, can do a an edit of one thing and say someone else can provide the soundtrack of it and somebody else can do special effects on it and it's just like a very big collaborative like project like, that okay that people can do stuff with so anyway um joseph gorbin levitt tweeted 10 original songs collaborative collaboratively made for hashtag watchdogs legion by you come play with us um tweeted on july 11th um, according to the FAQ on Ubisoft's website, the publisher will be paying $20,000 for the original music which will be played during the game, like as one example offered, while you're driving around the game's version of London. At $2,000 per song, the proceeds will end up being paid out through hit record to whichever of the platform's users helped create the music. So it's kind of like a contest sort of thing where users are working together to create these soundtracks that are going to be played on the radio mm-hmm. and watchdog legions hmm. um so there's been a tell lot me the of, controversy the controversy beep, beep. being is um so tweeted by mike bithel he was saying that this sucks <laughs> <laughs> wow oh snap they're fighting words <laughs> yeah hard hitting um and he was saying that pay people for their labor, stop exploiting fans, fans and hobbyists while devaluing the work of those with the gall to actually expect consistent payment for work done. Do better, Ubi, we're counting on you. Which I don't agree with him personally. No. So the big debate is, are, is Ubisoft taking advantage of these artists who are collaborating with each other essentially for free because they're not guaranteed to win any money if their composition isn't Mm -hmm. selected for the game. Um, And that's where the controversy lies, is that people working for essentially free because they aren't guaranteed any money um, through hit record. Mm -hmm. Well, as so, somebody who's like worked for like creatively for free before stuff like that, but it's like you're never really going into it being forced. I hope you know these people aren't going into it being forced into it. They're going into it in a collaborative effort because they want to make something. Like I feel like if they're choosing to put themselves in that position and they're going to be making something out of it, one that benefits everybody because you're going to hear what you're making and it's really cool way to express yourself. And you know you're not you know being forced into that. The people, this guy apparently is just like, oh, they're getting people to do work for free. You know, clearly, you know, they're not forcing them to do it. They're, well, this person's yeah. putting themselves into the position of like, oh, I'm going to put my time and effort into this project, into this collaboration. And there's, and, there's, is there any limit to the amount of people that can enter, or is it pretty much anybody can like make a song and say, hey, I throwing it up. You know, it's just me and an acoustic guitar. But no, anybody that's part of the the hit record website and then that community i mean so is this something like that you have to pay pay like a subscription service type thing you pay 30 bucks a month and then you can get people to help you with your stuff i I don't think so i think it's free you can just create an account log on and start uploading so do you win the two thousand dollars per song so or do you have to pay two thousand dollars to get your song in no you you win win the two thousand dollars. so but here's my thing right 
it's the users who helped create the music. So when let's say I do the lyrics, you do the music, and then another person does whatever, like whatever. mixes it, yeah. mixes it. So then that's three right there. Let's say we went two thousand. So we well, got no, split. it's it's ten songs. It's ten songs, thousand so dollars per per song. song. Exactly. So then that two thousand dollars for that one song between three of us. They can be split between people. Exactly. It'll be six hundred and some bucks. It's six hundred seven bucks. So to get a, they, I think they got to be a little. It's, I think it's pretty specific. But once you start thinking about it, like wh- the more people work on a song, the more you got to split it. And like you said, they're mm-hmm. going into it knowing that they're doing this for free at yeah. first because there's no guarantee of winning it. Um, I think that's where Mike Bittle is taking the the well, yeah, the the, 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 the issue is because. It could potentially be a lot or well, yeah, just two hundred bucks. Well, you know? I don't know. The if issue that... in question is: is Ubisoft exploiting Boy. this I... community? I, I I think it's a slippery slope. If they are to do this on a more regular basis, I can see where he's coming from. Being saying that it's a bad practice because you know there's composers and there's people that. You know, Watch Dogs is a unique game because it has radio stations. Most games don't have things where you can flip around and change the songs like GTA or Watch Dogs. But say, you know, if Nintendo or Square is like, uh, you know, composers, you know, you have a chance to write the battle theme for Final Fantasy 16. Uh, that, and only one of you wins and dozens and dozens or hundreds of you are going to attempt this feat. And you're gonna that you know that that's an example where it could be egregious because you you really are like that takes a lot of time making right? making something like a classical piece of music like that and so I think he's looking at more of that from that point of view that you what know, could happen but and, I, and the, the way I look at it is the people who are submitting into this contest are not going to be the the professionals the people who have names for themselves they're most likely going to be like the no-name people who do this for fun most of the time and want to try to are, are trying to make a name for themselves and get mm-hmm. discovered or something. So I understand it from that point of view. I also would like to know how much would they normally have paid a a, a professional to compose the or get or put together the soundtrack. A lot well, more. A lot more. So <laughs> are they cutting it cheap by also asking the fan base to do it? You know, like. So I could I could see it from both sides. Like this is a chance for somebody who no one knows, mm-hmm. come and maybe break into the scene that they could potentially start composing music for for video games. But they're how much are they saving? How much money are they saving? You know, are they I'm trying sure, to sure are they trying to shortchange other yeah. other other composers by taking this route? Like you know, like yeah. people who are doing this professionally already who make a living off and of this. I think I think today they did tweet out saying that. Like they are paying like professional composers for other aspects of the game, but mm, okay. for these ten songs that are going to be on the radio, they're just outsourcing. Then, yeah, they're they're, they're, they're reaching things. out to the they're giving the fans a chance to mm. provide something that lives within the game. Yeah, that's so, a neat. Co- that's I think it's a neat opportunity, and it's like they're not forcing. You know, I think it'd be fucked up if they were uh, being like, oh, wow, you can enter this contest, but you need to pay us like $500 per entry song, oh, well, and then you may ridiculous. win, and that's just oh, totally... Well, that would, they would be... Uh, yeah, that'd be yeah. a lot more hot water. But, yeah. I mean, they're totally that'd people who can go into it, you know, from that water. community that are into it. They're doing that of their own accord. They're, you know, they're going to try to give it the old good old college try and get, in, get into a video game. Yeah, but, I mean, like, I think it's just... The concern comes from the culture of just, like, devaluing professionalism and mm. uh, just having, you know... We're just going to get a bunch of freelancers to write all this stuff on the website because they are going to do it for cheaper or like, you know. It's harder now because when we have a lot more people working from home now, you have the accessibility of working from home or, you know, whatever, being your own boss or companies are looking for that with websites like Fiverr and, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of freelance stuff. It's kind of getting harder. The line's getting a little more blurred with, you know. Yeah. That's what's in freelance rather than like this is a professional setting. That's why everybody's got a side hustle these days. (laughs) That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. So uh, this happened, I think. After we got home from last week's show, Nintendo uh, announced the Switch Lite. Uh, we were predicting a few episode, episodes ago about what we thought it would look like. I think we were right on all accounts, except for the fact that it does not dock, um, even with a dock. Yeah. Just like I think that was the only thing we got wrong. Right? Yeah, so it's still we, gonna... we even called the Pokemon edition, right? Oh, I think we did, yeah. 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 It didn't come with it, but I think that was a stupid thing for me so, to think. So it'll, it'll come out, you know, 
It's not when Pokemon already? When, when Pokemon already No, comes. it oh, doesn't wow, even that's, that, that surprises me, actually, because most of the, you know, things that come with the system, like Mario Odyssey Switch was installed on there. There's been, you know, countless whatever digital editions for, like, Xbox or something. Yeah, but that was oh. more money, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, like, this one, I think it's just a $200 one that comes out the same day. That's still pretty expensive. Uh, I mean, for me, like, but that's all, I mean, it's, like, full console, 200 bucks, but that also, I think, adding to the value, if you they install the game on there, I mean, that'd be awesome, but... I, I'm one of those that doesn't like that personally. I like physical. I like having my cartridge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's coming out in three colors. There's a, a grayish one, a bluish one, and a goldish one. Uh, it's got 20 to 30 percent battery life. It's got a slightly smaller screen. It's 5.5 inches as opposed to 6.2. Um, as I said before, it is not dockable. Um, looks like it's got maybe a little bit more kid friendly. The Joy Cons aren't detachable, so. Maybe it will feel a little bit sturdier in your hands, and it does have an actual D-pad. So oh, wow. those are the changes. I think it's going to sell a ton. Um, I think oh, yeah, for sure. Right mm-hmm. in time for the holidays. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you know. Um, the marketing for the parents who little want. Kayla wants a switch. Exactly. Which one should we get her? Kids. The one that's mm-hmm. going to take up our TV and cost a hundred dollars more, or the blue I mean, one that's two hundred. Essentially, it's a she likes it's blue. A, it's a big Game Boy Advanced. They yeah. Play with other switches. <laughs> yep. I actually True. heard that the Vita screen was five five or five inches, and this is. 5.5, so it's only a little bit bigger than a Vita screen. Wow. Yeah, the Vita yeah. screen was pretty big. Yeah, it was pretty big. I like the Vita screen yeah. a lot. I'll be honest. I'm already contemplating whether or not I'm going to get it for the kids. Oh, there you go. For Christmas. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, like that, it frees up mine. Like, you know, sometimes I want to play it. My son's off in his bedroom with it, and I'm freaking out whether or not he's destroying it or not. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Go to town with this one. Yeah, hey. You know? Plus, it's all one piece. You don't have to worry about him losing a Joy-Con. Exactly. Or... Yeah, Plus, it's got an actual D-pad, too. What that color did you guys more. like? Oh, for the light? Yeah, the, there was a the gray, a turquoise, and like a yellowish gold. It's, to me, it was the gray. Yeah, the like, gray, kind of yeah. the old school, right? Oh, extremely. Yeah. So yeah. that's what how I thought I wanted it. I should effect. make one in a GameCube purple, though. Yes, <laughs> I agree. I would That'd prefer nice. a Game Boy Color clear purple. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. like the Nintendo 64 <laughs> controller? Yeah, exactly. That'd be cool, like yeah. that nice okay. clear. There'll, there'll probably be a bunch of homebrew mods that are just like, "Wow, here, put the plastic on it." I would, oh, yeah. I would be fascinated to see what Game Boy colors sold the most colors. Like, what was it has the, to be the clear one, the clear purple. Yeah, that's the yeah. one I had. <laughs> Did you ever trade? You know where the battery comes off? Oh, the screen? No, no, oh, no, no. On, oh, the, the on where you put the batteries no. on the back. I used to like trade them with friends. Be that's like, cool. Oh, yeah, I got that's a really cool. the back. Yeah. I like that idea. That's nice. <laughs> I love the little like gimmicky stuff like that, like small little things, yeah. like pogs. Um, so yeah, that's the Switch Lite. Will it'll come out in what is it November? I, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Full, right the same day, right? Sword as, and Shield. I'm pretty sure. Probably around like the 11th or whatever. These that's like Nintendo's. Speaking big Speaking of Sword and Shield, talk about a segue. <laughs> we have uh, some controversy that's been coming out about the animations slash lack thereof in the upcoming Nintendo Switch title. Mm-hmm. I hadn't heard about this until somebody at work had mentioned it to me, and then I decided to do some digging, and apparently it's a thing. Yep, I think what really ignited this whole fire was the National Dex controversy when that was brought up in the interview with the developers. They're like, all right, you know, we'll, the Pokemon from the Pokedex and Sword and Shield are the only Pokemon available in the game. We're not going to do the National Dex because of, you know, then they start citing it's a lot of people think it's, you know, they think it's an excuse. It's like, oh, it's too much work, all of this. When it, you know, of course, it's another game. It's the first Pokemon game on like a home console that's like an official title, part of the main series. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a lot of work. You know, developers do go through a lot of work. Totally understand that. But the excuses that they were trying to cite for, or the reasons they were citing for this animation or lack thereof, is that, you know, they're like, oh, we, we're doing this, you know, the National Dex is cut because we want to put more time and effort into the animations, the looks, uh, everything, you know, the graphics of the game, whereas the animations they saw in the trailer, one of the, for example, the Corgi Pokemon, it just sits there and does tail whip, they just literally pick up the model, rotate the model, and then wiggle it back and forth a couple times and then put it back. There's no, like, fluid like on twos or anything no animation like that they just take the model rotate it rotate it a couple more times and then rotate it back and this was in the trailer that was recently mm-hmm. released hmm. yep that revealed a couple more but that's how it's been <laughs> since like x and y that's pretty sad yeah it's it literally because it's like a oh, tail whip and the model will move like a like a little bit and then it'll just they just rotate it and go yeah, i want to see 
Blastoise gets smacked in the face with that tail. Yep. And I want to see him recoil and then have a bruise left. They actually, for a while, didn't <laughs> show the uh, Pokemon attacks hitting. It would just, like, it would do the little animation of them, like, going up and, like, doing whatever. Say it was, like, Fire Blast or something. It'd be like, and it would show them doing it. Then it would just cut to the second Pokemon being hit and going, like, Arr! Huh. Even red and blue, you could kind of see the moves hitting them. Yeah, exactly. I saw a scratch. I mean, the scratch. Yeah, you get the little scratch over them. Yeah. It's like, but it never shows like the actual like the your sprite hitting the other sprite like. Yeah, true. So okay. I don't know if that was like a. I think it might have been part of a censoring thing. Huh. But hmm. interesting. So you know, so apparently the, there's this uh, Chinese uh, developed mobile game Pokemon. Have you heard about this? Which uh, there's a it, couple of them. Well, one of them, I don't know, I've been hearing people going on about how, oh, it looks so much better than Sword and Shield, and it's, like, hmm. you know, totally independent. This was part of a check it Kotaku out. article I was reading. But it also pointed out that this game had taken a lot of the animation straight from Pokémon Tournament. Oh, probably. Yeah, so, I could even see though it was like trying those Chinese to, rip-off ones. Yeah, so even though it may have looked more impressive, it's not being built from the ground up. It's no. not a full-fledged, you know, you know, 40, 50-hour RPG like we expect Sword and Shield to be. Mm. Um, so, I don't know. I'm always on the, not always, but usually on the side of the developer there and kind of more of a wait and see approach. Um, I think maybe they could turn it around if, and I don't think people necessarily go for Pokemon for, you know, graphical fidelity and stuff like that. I, it would be cool for them to, for the Pokemans to be a little more lifelike. Um, but I, don't know, I feel like people are just kind of like they're blowing it away. Yeah, they're right nitpicking now. things now because I feel like the big, the biggest issue is not being able to get all whatever, oh, like close to nine hundred now, yeah. which is absolutely understandable. Like I was, a, I was one of the people that was upset. And I'm pretty sure I brought it up to you guys the week I found out. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck? There's no Pokemon National decks. I'm gonna poop in my diaper. Yeah, but it's like I mean, it is interesting just because like the whole motto of the game is gotta catch them all and you can't yeah, we them give all. you yeah, there <laughs> used to be 150 you could catch all of them <laughs> except they for the ones under the truck gotta catch a some. reasonable amount <laughs> <laughs> please don't some. overdo it we don't want any more people just sitting in their basements all day yeah please catch a reasonable go outside play pokemon go you can do that <laughs> and then like there's a story that i read one uh, that was like uh somebody who went to like a special event, got like a special Arceus or Mew or something like that, and they've been transferring it like oh, it, yeah. through all their games mm -hmm. and the new like Pokey Bank or whatever that they have. They're like, oh well, I can't transfer. What am I supposed to do with this Pokemon I've been using for thirteen years? Sorry, <laughs> man. I mean, at that point, it's like I totally get it. I mean, great. That's I respect people that do that because that's cool. It's like that's what Pokemon's about. It's bonding with your Pokemon. I go on that. You go on this huge epic adventure with your little guys you raise from these little things to these sometimes huge crazy monsters and. You've, I can understand if you've had one since like Red and Blue or like Gold Silver, Ruby Sapphire, and he's been with you through your whole life, your whole Pokemon journey, and now you can't play with him. That is upsetting. But at the same time, I didn't even I, know that that was a thing, man. Yeah, I, it's yeah. crazy. They have yeah. like there's a way to get Pokemon from like I think there is a cap where you can go back only so far, but yeah. you're able to like. It's crazy the way you, that they can transfer them now back from the super old gens. You I have mean, to go like jump through hoops to do it, and it's not easy. But if you, you have to wait it. six more months in order to have. I'm sure they'll come out with a third version. or Pokey Pokemon in this game. Would you wait six more months? I mean, honestly, I mean, the way that they are putting the other animations, like the new trainers look great. I love that the style so far looks amazing. Uh, the Dynamaxing thing, I think only certain Pokemon can do it. I'm not sure. I don't know if everyone can. It's with that mechanic where they grow huge. Um, but, I mean, those animations look good. Those are so far, and, I mean, I'm sure they're only going to tweak them as it goes on. And if anything, Pokemon will do what Pokemon always does, release a third version for another cash grab with... Probably more Pokemon in it, or you know, some kind whips. of feature. Better tail yeah. whips, better Corgi Pokemon. A couple more legendaries. <laughs> yeah, to like we're get, listening. Get the upside down Pokemon. Check out this Corgi's tail whip now. <laughs> yeah, it's, you never know. There might even be like a whole pack or something like move pack. I mean, you yeah. never know. But I mean, I, I'm just excited for it now. I mean, I was definitely one of those people that was upset, but you know, over time it kind of like. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm gonna get Pokemon. It's, so you're gonna pick it up. I'm yeah. gonna buy it either way. <laughs> just like Final mm -hmm. Fantasy VII, I'm gonna buy it either way. All right, so that's the latest in the Pokemon controversies going on about that Sword and Shield. Sounds like uh, a lot of yapping and just like Corgi. I don't think it's gonna. Well, yeah, well, everybody's it, gonna. Sorry, look slow news week. Sorry. Slow news week. Bark bark. Um, so we did get some exciting Mortal Kombat news. We found out <laughs> that uh, Sub Zero was cast as uh, Joe Taslam. Uh, I think he's best known for his roles in. 
some of the later Fast and Furious movies, as well as something, uh, the Raid series, which I haven't watched, but apparently people like. Uh, he's got a martial arts background. He's an Indonesian actor. Uh, definitely looks the part. Um, I think we also learned this week that it's going to be R-rated and will feature fatalities. So what does that mean exactly? Does that mean, you know, people are going to die? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, because it's yeah. not a game. You can't just put another quarter in. I think the last, didn't the last uh, Mortal Kombat movie come out? Was that like the time before Saw? I mean, like all these new gory kind of horror. Well before that. Oh, yeah, so... I think the the grounds the, the floor is pretty much broken out for that. Like they they're probably gonna go crazy with that. Yeah, especially yeah. with the effects. Especially now. with Mortal Kombat 11. Oh, even watching oh, yeah. you guys play it the other week was just like I saw the guy's skull get like ripped out of his body, and the <laughs> one where the guy was like leaning over or got like pulled over this big pit. These skeletons are coming up. Oh and yeah, that was oh yeah. His body, I'm like oh, <laughs> that's brutal. Yeah, Shang Tsung's fatalities. I don't know. That's a little metal. A little. That's the most pretty... metal thing I've ever seen. <laughs> one of the most. And metal some things. of the fatalities, I I do think oh, maybe a little too much, but I, there, at this. Well, Point, I just they've kind of got to be I'm, that's their hook yeah I've uh, been desensitized to them at this point like, and there's some character like there's some characters that I play as a lot and I've just seen them so many times it's just like, like boring yeah, like, check my phone <laughs> yeah <laughs> you think you notice if they change the color of the blood like wh- like slightly off but the, like one you've seen a bunch of times you're like I would know because every time that. I kill an enemy with blue blood, I'm like, oh, nice. Ooh, different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think they should do that. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, wait, speaking of which, just to, some random thing I thought of. Sonya, I had her in her 4th of, Gal- 4th of July gear that I unlocked, and I was fighting Devora, who has blue blood. Yeah. And at the end of the fight, I was just like wearing this white outfit covered in red, white, and blue, bl- bl- red and blue blood, and it was just, like, so patriotic. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> the only thing that make it even more patriotic is she was holding a hot dog in one hand. Yep, exactly. Um, but, yeah, now I'm, like, now I'm not really manning Sonya anymore, so I had, like, going back, and I was playing her after I'd been playing Liu Kang for a long time and playing Jade for a long time, and I was like, ooh, i got to get back on the swing of things. It's, it's hard. It's hard to have... Multiple to have multiple mains for sure, and I'm hitting just waiting for that Jackie Chan Adventures fighting game. Oh man, Until the that day would, that comes out, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I'd love to, I'd play that in a heartbeat. That one more team, <laughs> Jackie. You need to get the amulet. What's uh, the what the what are they called? The uh, not Shengong Woods Allen Showdown. Fuck. What are they called? The t- oh, Talisman, they Ta- call Talismans. Talismans, probably, talismans yeah. yeah. Get the, the talisman, Jackie. You need the talisman. You need the talisman. You need the talisman. What the hell are you talking about? You've never seen the show? Jackie Chan Adventures. I know. I You've never wow. seen it? Oh, actually. That's one with the cartoon of Jackie Chan? Oh, okay. Yeah. I have seen it. I okay. totally forgot. About it. I saw it when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. The sa- those Saturday yeah. morning cartoons were yeah. amazing, yeah. man. Okay, those were all right. Yeah, and Jackie Chan would like introduce him and stuff. Yeah, he'd like yeah. be at the end of the episode. They're like, Jackie, what's your favorite part? Of, like, where do you like to go on vacation? He goes, oh, you can tell he probably doesn't understand half of what like, the mm-hmm. person's saying. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, vacation. I go, my mom likes a lot. We go to the food. We get it. It's great. And then he goes Dude, over and does. Like, you just sound racist as fuck, right? <laughs> no, no, because that's what he would do. He was just like, no, we go. It's great. It's the food, vacation, good. And he'd just go and he hit like that little bar thing, all the things coming out of it. And they'd be like, thanks, Jackie. And he'd be like, hey. hey. I love Jackie Chan. He's one of my favorite I'm sure actors you do. and martial I'm sure artists. I'm sure you do. I do. Okay. There, there's a post about a samurai showdown. I told him they should add Jackie Chan into it. Yeah. From, from uh, or no. No, it was not Jackie Chan. I said they should add to it. I said it was Samurai Jack. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, that that's, would be amazing. I'd, buy, I'd drop 60 bucks right now if they add them. Really? Yeah. Okay. Is that, you listening? <laughs> Whoever developed Developers. Samurai, Samurai Showdown. Showdown. Drop it to 30 and then I'll buy it and put Samurai Jack in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and give me and fish eye Season pass free again. All right. Um, so I thought this was kind of a cool story. Uh, it's not really a news story. It's just more of a fun thing to put in. Uh, the Reaper Lords clan in Red Dead Online. Uh, it's like a super prestigious clan of people that are super dedicated to the game. This is a quote from the leader, uh, Dirty Warka. Right. Our recruiting process takes months. During this time period, Reaper Lord hopefuls are tasked to all sorts of tests. One example mentioned by Dirty Warka involved espionage. Recruits may be asked to do recon on other in-game groups and to write detailed reports on member activity and location. Recruits must also develop unique events for the group as a whole, such as horse wrangling challenges and elaborate manhunts against full-blown members. Once they've got a concept, recruits have to actually build hype and momentum for their events using flyers and word of mouth. Reaper Lords also challenged recruits to test out their skills, which is how the Reaper Lords ended up putting a bona fide horse show in Red Dead Online over the weekend. Like their real-world counterparts, horse shows are meant to be exhibitions that display the capabilities of different horse horse breeds. 
This is another quote. We are definitely a rare breed. Dirty work, I said. I know of no other crews that go to the lengths we do to ensure members are fully committed. From running char charity events to meetups, IRL, we need to know members are of the highest characters. And they, they also go on in the article to say that less than 1% of applicants actually make it into the clan. So, wow. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's just, intense. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. That's like hardcore dedicated uh, I, role play. I read yeah. that and I instantly wanted to uninstall my Red Dead and Redemption. <laughs> Why? I, I, that just sounds like I cannot. I, lie. I'm, I would not join the posse. I would not do all of this for well, them. Well, no, I wouldn't either. But like, still if you cool thing, if you got, it, it's, it's yeah. cool for them. They, yeah. they have nothing else to do. You know, like, no it, other games to play. It takes like, a second life. It's the same. It kind of sounds like it's the same thing. Like there's a heavy, like dedicated uh, GTA Online servers that are heavy role play. Like I watched the video online today of one of my other favorite content creators out there, Oni Plays. He went on uh, a dedicated. GTA uh, 5 roleplay server and was like, oh, I'm going to buy a car. And he like texted a guy that was, he's like, oh, selling car. Like they'll have certain offers come up. And the guy was just, they met in a parking lot and he, he was super serious. Like, oh, it's like 65 G's. And you know, it's pretty good, especially when it's wet out and like going into straight, straight up like real life facts about this virtual fake car. <laughs> I love that so much. And his friend comes over and just hits the windshield out. He goes, oh, I'm gonna have to pay for those damages. He goes, I don't think you're trying to sell me a piece of shit car. <laughs> Yeah, I love they, those RP servers. <laughs> oh my god, they're just, they're just asking to be trolled. Which you know, don't do that. It's bad. Let people have fun. <laughs> you go on your other servers. You do your own thing. But you know. So yeah, I can't say that I've ever really been part of a big community like that. The closest I've got is a Destiny Two clan that met up occasionally and you know would help each other out in strikes and raids. But no barrier to entry there. Just play the game and respond to a "you're not a robot" question. Well, you, you didn't have to do. Some some dances, some specific dances. No, no game, dances, no? no making flyers for guardian dance parties or anything like that. <laughs> um, okay. Come to my silent disco. Maybe they're out there. I mean, if you want to play with like you know the best raiders out there, I'm sure you've got to be. You got to go through hoops. Yeah, and people are like, kind of in a, into a, a bad way um, when they're looking for people to join the raid. They're like, must have at least twenty clears. Know exactly what to do. Have this gun. Be this light level. Have this type of Boots equipped. It doesn't sound fun. No. Yeah. So, but there's a lot more casual people as well. And you just but. we love you casuals. At least I do. <laughs> I play um, mobile games. He does. Oh, we. Did you want to talk about Teppen? Yeah. Real quick. Uh, uh, Teppen's a new mobile game that I started playing. It's like a Capcom crossover. Capcom. Or, uh, Capcom. Yeah, Capcom X Capcom like card game, and it's a little different. You know, you have your deck of thirty cards, kind of like Hearthstone. You have your heroes, kind of like Hearthstone. You can play as the Rathalos or the Nerigante from Monster Hunter, which is weird. I mean, but then again, there's no like definitive player character, so I guess that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you get your deck of cards. They have like different colors, kind of like Magic: The Gathering. You have an auto. So it's pretty much system. every Capcom game you could think of has a character represented. Not everyone, but I'm sure that gives them room because they have like Darkstalkers, Street Fighter, Monster Hunter. What was it Castlevania? Castlevania isn't represented. Oh, no, it's Konami. What am I thinking? But <laughs> they, I mean, they could do if they have a castle like a. Metroidvania type game. I'm sure yeah, they throw yeah. that in there. I'm waiting for Power Stone. I want to see some Power Stone representation. And there's some Dante and Devil May Cry. Yep, stuff. Devil May Cry. Mega Man. Mega Man. Yep. You get some Mega Man X. Um, they'll probably put an original Mega Man in. They could go anywhere with this. They've got a lot. So my understanding is that Teppen's been in development for years now. Really? Yeah. I, yeah. I just saw it out of the blue. I, uh, yeah. So I, I was reading up on it um, last week when I actually what last week or the week before when I actually dropped um, that it had been announced. I think. 2013 or 2014 wow. 20, uh, 2013 2014 um and it fi it's finally out and it came out just it was like oh it's out and that's it's it free. like it's, it's free yeah. and it was like with barely any advertisement or anything like that yeah like i, I saw i just downloaded it um i haven't played it yet uh it's mobile only and it's not on pc which a lot of people are already clamoring for because um on one podcast I was listening to, they were saying, oh, the game, it's, game's very, very hard to stream, which is how a lot of these games get an audience because it's only on mobile, so they really should bring it to PC if they wanted to take off and be a legit Hearthstone contender. I guess it's got a long way to go to get there. but oh, yeah. No, for sure. But, I mean, it's got a solid, you know, single player for now. And, and there's it multiplayer. Good. It sounds like it's got good production value. Uh, like, I would much rather play as all these Capcom characters that I have a history with than... Mm -hmm. How yeah. are the microtransactions? They're not bad. I mean, I, honestly, I logged mm -hmm. in. They're giving you a whole bunch of free stuff just for the first, like, the release when you log in now. I got, like, I think I got, like, 10 or 15 free pack tickets, and you can buy up to, like, 10 at a time, and you get, like, seven, eight cards per pack. Um, 
and you get everybody's standard deck when you go through the story mode you beat everybody's story and it's only three fights per story you unlock their deck right away you can level the characters up you get more cards from doing that you get packs money in-game currency and stuff just from playing as the characters and doing the daily missions which is sweet so they give you a lot of stuff for free out of the gate and since there's only one set out right now you know it's pretty manageable uh to kind of get a lot of the good cards or get really into you know the meta of this game per okay. se so far but you know you just if it does well you know the only downfall i can see is if you know they start releasing more sets more packs are going to come out more cards are going to come out you know if you lose track if you put it down you're going to kind of get lost mm -hmm. but I mean, it seems like it could be fun. I'm very excited for, you know, what's to come and to play more of it. Cool. Well, I'll have to give it a shot maybe tonight. Yeah, I think you should. You, you, I sent my friend code to you guys. Oh, yeah. We can all be friends. We can all be friends. We can play each other on the interweb. We could. We could play each other. All we right. could poop and play each other. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. Well, I could, I'd probably tell you guys. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go take a dump. Who wants to play, like, some tepping? Yeah, me too. Yeah, we're going to take a wicked tepping. <laughs> yeah, what's up with the name? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I know the iPhone autocorrects it to all capitals. It's like T E P P E N. Really? Oh, yeah, that's what yeah. you meant? Oh, I was like, what I the hell is this? You meant just the first one was capitalized, so it like, realized that it was a, a thing, like, you know, a yeah. title. It's like, what's well, a real thing? No, it just autocorrected to straight tepid. And I was like, did I do that? No. Nope, you, you don't know what that means? Totally so let's find excellent. Out. Yeah, please, somebody. I don't right. think it means anything, really. Totally I excellent, just, powerful yeah. people. I think they just picked eating. a random word. Yeah, I okay. think so. I think Nutrients. So. What tepin. does tepin mean? What does... Oh, oh no. Not tepid. <laughs> tepid means warm. What does... Damn it. Just <laughs> tepid means warm. <laughs> okay. One more time. All right. Silence. <laughs> what does tepin mean? All right, it gave me tepid again. I guess it's a made-up word. Or maybe it means something. In what did you... Okay. Top, summit, top, summit apex, apex. scop. Yeah. Oh, Thank so it's you. probably like... The so nothing. King of the hill. <laughs> kind of like top, the tip of the top. That means something. You're trying to is you're trying to get on top of the cards. Yeah, you got to be, be the last the, man standing on the, the whole on the story card in the stack. game is everyone they're like you need to go to the realm of illusion or whatever, and everyone's like, ah, okay, I guess so. <laughs> um, so I d did skip over. Um, TurboGrafx 16 Mini from Konami went live on July 15th on Amazon Prime Day. Uh, it's 100 bucks. A little seems like a lot. Um, comes with 26 games. Uh, Half of are, which are Japanese. Well, I would say most of them. Mm -hmm. And the, these are all, you know, I we went through this list, man, and these have been lost to the times. I've heard of R Type. There's a uh, Super New Adventure Island Air Zonk, which is like I think pretty bonk. It's like a, it's pretty much like a ripoff platformer. But it had its own following back then. Yeah. Uh, Bomberman '93, following the Madden train. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really like Dungeon Explorer. I think was the only other one. Yeah. So I mean, the full list of games. There's 26 of them. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, it's a system that. Oh, Yeez. Was, was this a system that was popular in Japan? Was it? I think it actually was. It was. I think it was pretty popular in Japan. There was. A, it had a you know, a, a niche following back here, but. Turbo graphics. I wasn't. I was really surprised to even see this as like a big thing mm -hmm. that was getting announced. I can't wait to play Two Man Fu on it. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll put the Jackie Chan adventures on this one. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe they, someone can develop it. Hey, ah, that's J on, that's only game. I'm gonna drop a hundred dollars just to play Two Man Fu. Two Man Fu Ninja so, Spirit. Uh, the, I, sh I should say the the pre-orders went live July fifteenth, and it's not even coming out until twenty twenty. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. It launches with 50 games, including 26 Japanese titles. Is that? Huh. Okay. Well. Okay. That's yeah. more. That's that's a better value. Um, and you know, if it's if they're good emulation, unlike the PlayStation Classic. No, my yeah, that's already down to like what 15, 20 bucks. Yeah, I, find I, that, I almost picked funny. it up 20 for 20 bucks because I hear they're pretty easy to mod. They are, yeah. And which if is, you can yeah. just you know get every PlayStation on a little box, every that you I, know. I'd go for that too. I mean, it sucks because they made it run on the uh, the PAL. All the PAL games run slower because it's on a PAL. Mm -hmm. uh, all the ROMs. True. But I mean, definitely if you mod it, hey, that's why I did the Super Nintendo Classic. Oh, did you? Oh man, it's the best. So I, you have all the games on it. Yep. Oh. I have. I think I'm only missing one, which I forgot to do. I'm still kicking myself. Can you for still it. do all the features like suspend? Yep. And yep. Really? Everything's there. Just more games. And you can actually wow. make it even better, so that once you do it, you can make it so that you go back to the menu 
with just some um, certain. Yeah. Right. Oh, because really? Because right. instead of having to get up and go push the reset. Yeah. Yep. Because that the Super Nintendo Classic doesn't have that feature. Okay, I might you have know? to. Uh, yeah. Let it, you borrow my Super Nintendo. Yeah, I gotta, I'm gonna get back into it. Cool. It's fun. It's nice. All right, we own all the physical copies, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> Spent enough money on Nintendo over the years. Yeah, true. Um, who had this story about GameStop? Me. All right. Well. I used to work there. It was hell. But <laughs> it was funny just seeing, uh, like, I went online. They're like, oh, look at our retro stuff. And I usually go to, like, GameStop or a couple other websites to see, like, oh, you know, been out of the loop for a bit. I want to see what the dates of these games are dropping. Like, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I was like, I think that's coming out soon. I want to double check. Found out it's this Friday, which is kind of cool. And it's Nintendo Switch exclusive, which mm-hmm. is nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, They're, Nintendo's publishing it. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was exclusive, but that would come out on, like, Xbox and PS4 as well. But mm-hmm. um, It's going to have bad graphics. This <laughs> is my, <it's> my head. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the, what I was... Funny though, because I remember when I used to work there, they're they're touting their PS2 now. Any PS2 titles as like old retro games, and mm-hmm. like there's some I saw on there for like forty bucks, and I just remember <laughs> these same games seeing. Wow, like which ones were ten 40? years ago? Oh, the Dot Hacks. Oh, okay. Like Dot Hack oh games are kind of like yeah, rare. Yeah. Sweet Coden games are those are rare. Those always are rare. Yeah, they're it's it's crazy. Like I just remember them being. We used to just keep them in little like Manila like CD cases not even cases it was like the sleeves mm-hmm. and they they put them up like right on display out on the floor I remember one time we had this group of kids come in uh, the girl that they were with came in to trade in some stuff and she wanted cash for it um, like a big idiot because you know you get better store credit you always get ripped on the cash if you try to trade in for cash um, sometimes you just want drugs Anthony oh trust me yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they uh, she gave me all of her information and everything and the, the kids she were with or the, the other boys that she was with uh, they were over at the rack like looking through stuff and uh, I didn't find this out at the time because I was being a good employee and working. Uh, some lady right behind her, as soon as she left, was like, hey, you know those kids are just taking a bunch of games and stuffing them into their pockets, right? I was like, no, I didn't. So I looked over the counter, and these kids were just, like, hustling, like, pushing stuff in their pants and, like, just jetting out the door. And I went to go run out after them. And me being like, well, I'm going to save the day. I walk out the door, and I'm just like... I look at them in their car and they look at me and this is the point I realize where I can't do anything. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what the fuck am I doing? I was like, hey! And they're like, hmm. <laughs> and they looked at me and I just looked at them and I didn't say anything and they just continued to look at me and get in the car <laughs> and drive away. And, uh, and then yeah. she got busted. Right? And after, I, after that, I realized, I was like, I have all of her information. We just call the cops on them. So we did. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she got she get, <laughs> she came back with the cops crying, and I kind of felt bad, but I was like, ooh, yeah, pick better friends, Lee. Oh, mm. man. Did the kids get in trouble, too? I think so, but I, they weren't with her at the time, which is funny, because she just ended up, like, getting hooked into it because we had all of her information. You think that she was trying to, like, distract you? For maybe, the, no. maybe, but, I mean, who's going to distract me getting, like, ripped off by trading in their games to steal more shitty games that we aren't going to take? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. People are nuts. Anyway, so you, tell me about what you put on the paper. No. Uh, put, uh, <laughs> put some words in the paper. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it's funny that they're, they're selling these as retro games now. So it's like when you buy them uh, online, I've seen a couple people purchase these retro things. You know, it started with like GBA or, you know, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Games, Nintendo 64, Super mm-hmm. Nintendo. You don't know what condition you're getting them in. So you could pre-order this or you can buy this one online. Say you buy a copy of like Crash Bandicoot 2. You're like, oh, we have it listed for like six bucks. Okay, I'm going to buy it, you know. I got this and like three other titles. They're going to send me a box, or they send you a box in the mail. You open it up. You don't know what you're getting. You could get the full game in case with manual. You could just get the game in a sleeve. You could get the game in the instruction manual and a little rubber band. They are transparent about that, though, I think. Yeah, I think like on, they, on the website. Yeah, on the website, they're like, you know, we'll probably not come with the, with the case. Yeah. But if it if they're not, that's shitty. Yeah, because you don't really know what they're like, what you're getting. I mean... Because you're never guaranteed to, so it's always a gamble. But, I mean, if you have access to it, that's nice. But the condition I've seen people, like, unboxing these in is really, like, you know, it's really refurbished. Shit. It's kind of, you know, like, uh, assembly line, kind of, like, pumped out. Like, okay, we get mm. these games in, you know, send them to the factory, get them refurbished, send them out. You know, it's not like, if you're a collector, I wouldn't advise it. It is neat that we have the option now. It's, like, something that's more mainstream to get retro games from. But yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really like it. It's just sketchy. I don't like the, the practice trust, of it. You know, I like- verified seller on eBay. eBay, yeah, like yeah. or a mom and pop shop over GameStop. Yeah. Because it just seems, I mean, I spent my time in there and it could have changed. I don't know how it's changed over the years and hopefully it's improved but the way that we used to do it, I mean, wouldn't even test half the stuff. When I worked there, it's like, oh, okay, you want, I, tr- I remember trading in an, a broken Xbox 360 for a fight stick for free. Like when uh, St- uh, Street Fighter X Tekken came out. <laughs> I just traded in my broken Xbox there and they're like, oh, okay. And just got credit, got a fight stick and I won. 
that. I mean, no, that's, 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 I, yeah. I check, I grab most of my retro games on online. Oh, you just say you traded in a broken <laughs> Xbox? Xbox? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it just registered. Yeah, 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 yep, red. totally. Red ringed. I was like, oh, I'm, I work here, so I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Amazing. But yeah, it was uh, shitty. Oh, yeah, but I I wouldn't buy like I see I've seen the I think for because they've been doing it for like the last eight months selling the retro games online mm-hmm. and I'd look at the prices and I'm like yeah some of them are way too in- way too insane mm-hmm. um so I get most of mine retro games and they come in great condition and they work and where do you get them from um Luki Games oh. online okay. so there's a website um I'm pretty I think they actually have their own store in Florida. Um, that's cool. That's like yeah. That's the place to go from like the niche so mom and pops. That have the good quality. It'll, it'll give you the option when you go to the game. It'll give you the option that if you just want the game, it might it'll come in a generic case, whatever. It might not be full on, or if you want the complete, you know, game manual case, everything, you know, you pay like an extra dollar or two. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, I've picked up a couple games like that. Um, they work great. And yeah, I just appreciate it. It comes in a box, real nicely packaged, nothing, you know, damaged like that. Yeah. And if you have to return something, you just contact customer support. And right. That's it, you know? So I'm not going to pay, like, say, I'm going to buy, like, Xeno Gears for the PS2, shell out 45 bucks. It's a rare RPG for the PS2. Exactly. And, you know, I shell it out. You send me a box with just a sleeve in the game. I'm like, come on. You know, exactly. For collectors, you know, that's definitely you want to avoid that. But Or yeah. they would send you just a generic case with a printed yep, out, yeah. a printed out mm-hmm. you know. With Cover a label for with something yeah. written on it. Exactly. All right, guys, it is time for Mailbag. It's the new yeah. segment on the show where we get questions from anybody. We mean anybody. We Mail do not discriminate. Mailbag. Mailbag. Uh, so we got a couple. Um, <laughs> please send in more. I forgot to mention that at the top of the show. Um, give, it, give it a theme song, Anthony. Mailbag. We'll uh, mention it in the description. Mailbag. <laughs> What's Mailbag. inside the bag? It's my Mailbag. There we go. Fuck yeah. Need some work. I love yeah, it. It's, 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 oh, gotta, perfect. Gotta, gotta. Um, so anyway, this one comes in from Katie. Thanks, Katie. What would you say is the best gaming system for someone new to gaming? Leapfrog. <laughs> Gonna go with it. They gotta start them, we gotta start <laughs> them early, right? We're adventures for PC. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Spy Fox, Dry Cereal, Freddy Fish, Pajama Sam, Putt Putt Goes to the Zoo. Putt Putt. Oh my See? God. When yeah. I played Miss Kermit San Diego. What was your favorite putt putt? What was your favorite putt putt? Ghost of the Zoo. Space. 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 That was mine. Ghost of Space, yeah. I used to love space. I played anyway. a lot of Ghost of the Oh, no, Moon. It was the Moon. <laughs> moon, yes. yes. Back to the question. Back to the question. <laughs> okay, back to the question. Uh, I would have to say the Nintendo Switch. It's got uh, a lot of the Nintendo um, first-party games that are very accessible for the most part. Stuff like Super Mario Odyssey, uh, stuff like Mario Party, stuff like Mario Kart, all the Marios. Uh, you also can play... A bunch of There's smaller indie of indies, titles. Yeah. What? As you, yeah, I said tons of indies. Yeah, like lots and lots of indies. I mean, um, you can take it with you if you know if portable gaming is appealing to you. You have that option. If not, you can plug it into the TV. Um, I just think that there's, uh, you know. There's also an argument to be made for Xbox One. Oh, that's where I was going. Oh, that really? was mine. Yeah. That okay. was mine. Well, you tell me what you were going to say. So, I think this is the perfect time. If anybody doesn't have, own uh, one of the new consoles for this generation, I think the Xbox is the perfect one to start with. Mm-hmm. Especially now with the Game Pass it's Ultimate. Just because of Game, well, yeah. Game Pass Ultimate. Yeah. You have Xbox Live and Game Pass all wrapped up in one subscription. Mm-hmm. Hundreds of games, AAA title, titles. It's just, and it's a. I want to say more fluid, at least for me. I'm not used to the PS4s switching between inviting party members oh, well, and I'm, things like I'm that. I'm the opposite. I so think PS4 is way better. I honestly, for me, honestly, it feels like it's fluid. Like I don't have to skip a beat to invite somebody into a party. Don't really have to leave the game or do all the. Well, that's other just things, from your you know? experience. My experience, bro. but yeah. <laughs> my experience is that Xbox is a great console to start off with. New yeah. to, new to gaming, the Game Pass is amazing. Right now, they still have the EA Access, which PS4 is getting later on, I think, in the year, which is great. Gives you ten hours of uh, the free trial, full game free trial of um, EA titles, mm-hmm. and that's only thirty dollars a year for that sub- uh, subscription. That's. So Pretty damn good. Yeah, and you the transfers over the saves. So let's say you decide to pick up the game full retail, you've already played it ten hours and you haven't lost that progress. Mm-hmm. That's good. 
Yeah, so I think the game, the Xbox has all these these extra things to it. Yes, it doesn't have the best first party games like the PS4, but but if you end up liking video games, then you mm-hmm. can maybe invest in that. Exactly, go down the line, go down the line, be one of, be like us where we own all three systems. You know, yeah. don't touch your Xbox for two years, keep it in the closet. But every <laughs> week we talk about it, it makes me want to bring it out a little more. So we'll bring see. it out. I go back and forth between all three systems. Same here. Yeah, yeah. Tyler, what do you think? The James Sam yeah, Nintendo Switch all the way. What about you? Nintendo Switch also? I'm going to have to say for somebody who's just starting out, it's the Nintendo Switch. Just because there's so many family-friendly titles. You know, if you you can be super casual, you can be super hardcore, there's something for everybody there. You got your, you know, strategy games coming out, Fire Emblem for those hardcore strategy peoples. You got your Mario Maker for people young <laughs> Your and hardcore old. strategy people that have never played a video game. Never played a video game before? Yeah, Fire Emblem with your waifu simulator. Yeah. You got uh, Mario Monopoly. Odyssey. <laughs> Mo- Monopoly. You have uh, Catan, Catan, Settlers of. <laughs> There's uh, Catan VR. Yeah, really? Is really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, you just wow. get a PC if you're gonna. If you're new to gaming. You have somebody else assemble it for you. you can play everything. <laughs> and you can use it as a computer. All right, and this one comes in from Caitlin. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on the new Mortal Kombat movie? Is this a remake or a completely new movie? And who will die first? It's a completely <laughs> new movie. It's not a remake. Uh, and who will die first? Predictions, oh. Kenny? So, if, if we're talking mainline characters, because I, honestly, we're going to we'll get introduced to one of the characters right away, and he's going to hit somebody with a, a random guy. Oh, yeah. What I'm a, talking what about what a fatality. People, but main, <laughs> but mainline <laughs> guys. Extra number one. I would like to say first death. First death will be... Most death. Kano. Kano. Mm. Kano. That's gonna piss off the Australians. Kano, Aussies, <laughs> he's dying. I'm letting you know right it. now. Although I could also see him being a fan favorite. That would be a controversial way to start it off. That's what if it's Raiden. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if it, it's it, it, it <laughs> if it's Raiden, it's just like, oh man. Yeah, you know, that's like, some shit. Like that'll throw me off. I wouldn't know where where the movie's going from there. Yeah, so that's. I'm gonna guess they'll kill Liu Kang. Just because he's been dead for a while, maybe they'll like kill him off at first, and they can do some weird like zombie ghost stuff. I think they're gonna start new canon with this movie. I mean, I assume it's been so long they're not gonna like. Yeah, they're not. It's a brand. This is re- rebooting it, so everybody's alive. They're going from the beginning, and I and I, I like your theory, but I don't think Raiden or Liu Kang will die. Like these are mainstays. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. they've been there since the beginning. I can see, or you know who I could see dying first? Actually, very very low key character, Striker. Okay. Yeah, you know, sure. he's someone people know, but is it main enough to, you know, kind of miss out on? Freak out. People yeah. f- will freak out like, oh my god, he's dead right away. Like, no. Yeah. Well, I could see Striker getting killed first. What or, about like, you know, a Quan Chi? Or, or a... you know, which one I could see dying? The original Sub Zero, who turns into Noob Saiba. So then that leads into. Well, they just cast this character. Well, which Sub Zero is he playing? It's got to be the one that so, looks like a... The blue one. Yeah. So, he, so he, <laughs> he's, he's, he's the, the brother. One. So he's the brother, the one we're known. But we could we could end up seeing his older brother who... You know. I got to watch the history of Noob Saibot. I'm a little fuzzy so on it. It's the older brother to Sub-Zero. Originally. Originally. He dies. Quan Chi uses his sorcery, brings him back, and makes him into what he is now. I guarantee you can find a bunch of YouTube channels with some blog. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I actually like, saw a thumbnail 20, for it last night. Twenty minutes, twenty yeah. minute long. Yeah, I love those. But those I could, I could kind of see that happening. Like you know, like getting him to die first, and then you know you still have regular Sub Zero, you know, but the older brother, mm-hmm. um, Behan, Behan will die. Behind? Behind. <laughs> like, like what? <laughs> Almost like that. Behan. Like mine did last night. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I will say. Noob to bring in Noob. I, I think Noob will be in MK2. Exactly, but yeah. brother will die. Maybe at the end of the movie. Nah, he's going to die at the beginning of the movie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to kill Ryu from Street Fighter. Beginning. All right, so uh, that does it. We didn't get as many questions as we had hoped, so maybe next week we'll get a few uh, more. Um, follow us on Facebook. We're over there. Um, we make a post. We got a Let's Play coming up for Super Mario Maker. Um, And we'll be back next week for the Level With You show. Thanks for tuning in.